I do enjoy survival horror games. That's really not a secret. If you're anything like me, you expect a decent backstory, awesome controls, a visceral atmosphere, and most importantly, a variety of creepy crawlies and baddies. They don't always need to look like they went to the zombie farm to play the part. The average guy next door could be the first to stab you in the back if given the chance. Then, of course, there's those creeps that definitely stand out in the crowd and have one thing in mind, to eviscerate you and chomp on the remains. The rule is pretty simple here. I actually play these games, and these are the ones that I found most creepy, terrifying, or disturbing. And no, I never played the eight pages, so, you know, sorry, Slendy. Now, some images may be a bit graphic and kind of disturbing to some. There will probably be spoilers on here, too. If you don't like that sort of thing, then steer away now. And with that being said, let's continue, shall we? man's best friend certainly doesn't apply to this next entry. For those who have played Resident Evil, you know what I'm speaking of. The zombie dogs. They are fast and will run circles around you, making them a lot harder to kill. They generally work in packs and will jump and tear at you till there's nothing left. Best be prepared. There's no telling where these pooches will jump out from. I do love Bioshock. It's full of unsettling imagery and scary moments. Of course, I could rip through a bunch of splicers, no problem. But when encountering Dr. Steinman, that's when I nearly peed my pants. The good doctor, you see, considers himself the Picasso of the medical world. He was performing grotesque operations on his patients to make them beautiful. Of course, with each failure, he became more and more obsessed, and that made him incredibly dangerous. My advice to you, steer clear of this man of medicine, because if he ends up capturing you, you could very well wind up on his operating table. Then there are the slashers from Dead Space. Sure, they're the most common creature you'll ever encounter in the game. And they're slow and kind of weak when by itself. But if you have a horde of these facing you down, you better hope you have plenty of ammunition on hand. Their blade-like arms will cut you to shreds and make short work of you, if you're not prepared. There's a chance that if you have the misfortune of ending up in Silent Hill, then there's also a good chance that you'll run into this nurse. With each rendering, she became more and more disturbing to look at. She can show up anywhere, and you better believe that she will find you. Next up, Shodan from System Shock 2. For those who may be unfamiliar with this one, you basically fight your way through a derelict ship, through hordes of monsters guided only by the AI, Shodan, which is later revealed to have gone completely off the bend. She deems herself a god, and you merely an insect. Her only goal, eliminating you. Yes, it sounds like a familiar setup, with the monsters and the space setting. However, I think that System Shock 2 paved the way for the survival horror we have today. The head crabs from Half-Life were a definite pain in the butt, jumping at you from every corner and being a general nuisance. Then Half-Life 2 came out and introduced the new and improved model. They were quicker, and some were even toxic, causing more damage to the host, turning it into a poisonous zombie, as if they weren't bad enough. Red Dead Redemption is littered with side missions. It's what we expect from an open sandbox world. 
And when I first encountered Billy West, who stated that he wanted to do something nice for his wife and pick her favorite flowers for their 50th wedding anniversary, I really thought nothing of it. So I gathered the flowers and went back to him. He then invites me inside to meet the wife. To my surprise, she's dead. And from the look of it, she's been dead for some time now. Now, this may not be your typical creepy crawly, but to me, this whole scene with him and his wife had me wanting to leave as soon as possible. Dead Space was certainly unsettling, no doubt about that. In the second installment, however, things got a little more interesting. Take, for example, the crawlers. As soon as you enter the school, you'll be greeted by a short cinematic of one of these creepy crawlies as it makes its way to one of the survivors, who calls it to her. She picks it up, and then you're greeted by a large explosion, leaving blood and gore on the window. These things aren't that hard to kill, but they are relentless. And if you're greeted by a pack of them, you best have a plan or a quick exit strategy. When you first meet David in The Last of Us, he seems quite soft-spoken and friendly, even offering assistance. It quickly makes a dark turn, however, when David is revealed to be the leader of a cannibalistic group of hunters, who would sooner eat you than make you his best friend. My advice here, don't become the entree. What do you do when you wind up in unfamiliar surroundings and strange noises haunting the corridors? You have no means of defense, and your only weapon is your very mind, which is slowly unraveling the further you travel. In Amnesia, the Dark Descent, you encounter the Gatherers, relentless, deadly, and unkillable. They will pursue you to no end. My advice, run and hide. You have no option. I know some of these on the list may not creep you out, but they definitely did me. How about you, my friends? Anything that made you feel the way I did? Who or what was your favorite creep, villain, or monster? I'm done here. So if you like this episode, be sure to thumbs up and comment. Plus, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe. It definitely helps me out here. Till next time, don't look behind you.